Hello and welcome to our online PC meeting. I'm Ailsa McIntosh and I'm Chair of Gillespie's Parent Council. Thank you for joining us. Apologies in advance for any technical issues we might have. If you're having problems joining us or hearing us or if one of the presenters Wi-Fi freezes, we ask for your patience. We're using MS Teams because it's approved by Edinburgh Council, but it doesn't allow us to be as interactive as some other systems. The only people who can be heard are the presenters. Everyone else attending can write questions via the Q&A panel but can't be heard. Briefly, I'd like to go through a few things before we start. We're recording this event so that we can put it online for those who can't make it and brief minutes will be taken as they normally are at a PC meeting. Bearing that in mind, please don't share personal information in particular about your children that shouldn't be shared publicly. We usually aim for our online meeting to last about an hour, although we might go a bit longer tonight because we have some procedural things to cover this evening because this is our annual general meeting. So tonight I'll give a brief summary from my report as chair. Our treasurer, Ross Ingle, will give her report. We'll be agreeing members for the PC committee and looking for nominations for post holders. Usually these would all be done in person, but because of the limitations of meeting online and via Teams, we've asked for volunteers to join the committee from our school community in advance. We've asked people to email us and I'd like to thank those of you who've already got in touch. The names of our PC committee volunteers are on the Q&A panel and if you would like to join the PC committee this evening, can I ask you to email us at gghscouncilcoms with two m's at gmail.com and that's on the um, Q&A panel as well. Please email us before 7.45 p.m. and we'll add your name to the list as part of the formal process of finalising membership of the committee. After we finish the procedural side of tonight's meeting, we'll then have an update from our head teacher, Donald McDonald, and following feedback from our last meeting in September, Ben Lewis, deputy head teacher, is going to provide an update for our S1 parents and carers. We'll then go to a Q&A, which Donald will lead. As I said, we can only take questions via the Q&A panel. The mics won't work for anyone attending. The questions will be published for everyone to see by our parent moderator. So if you would like your question to stay private, please say so when you type it in. And can I ask that if you see a question on the Q&A panel that's similar to the one that you want to ask, could you please like that question rather than ask a repeat similar question? It will hopefully let us get through more questions and let our presenters concentrate on the most popular ones. We will close the Q&A panel to questions as the meeting draws to an end, but all the questions will be summarised after the meeting and we will put a note of them and the answers on our PC website at a later date. Before handing over to our treasurer, I'd like to give a summary of some of the parental engagement events that have happened since our last PC meeting in September and a very brief summary of my report. I was at the online CCWP, that's the Consultative Committee with Parents. It's a meeting with Edinburgh councillors, council officials and parent representatives from across the city last Thursday. There was an update from council estates that the pandemic has caused a delay to the refurbishment of Darek. It's delayed the tender process, so Darek won't be ready for August 2021. And Edinburgh Council is working with Gillespie's on contingency planning for this. Edinburgh Council has heard parents' concerns over lack of sport for students and following the Education, Children and Families Committee this week, they're hoping to introduce sports and active schools after the October holidays. Edinburgh Council is pursuing a one-to-one -one digital strategy uh, parents at the meeting were questioning this. There is a cost of £8 million if providing iPads for every child and that will not be a one-off cost. There will be administration, maintenance and replacement costs. Given that there's going to be an estimated £90 million shortfall in the council income this year, only £30 million of which will be met by Scottish Government, parents from across the city were questioning the strategy and there will be a further update at the next CCWP in December. Connect, formerly the Scottish Parent Teacher Council, is conducting a survey asking about your child's experience back at school and the link to this is on the PC website or can be found on the Connect website. The Social and Fundraising Group are looking at a possible Sportathon in November. If you're interested in helping, please do get in touch with them directly at jghsfundraisingcommittee at gmail.com and they are also on Facebook. My report as chair for this last year is on our website. Briefly, I'd just like to give my personal thanks to all the PC committee members and post holders for their support during what's been a particularly challenging and busy year. And thanks also to all the parents who have organised and helped out at school events and fundraising events when we were able to meet in person, and to everyone who has come to meetings and got involved in various lobbying campaigns. As parent representatives, we would like to give a particular thanks to all the staff at Gillespie's, to the admin team, to all the teachers and support staff, 
to the senior leadership team and head teacher for their ongoing professionalism and dedication during these unsettled and changing times. My personal thanks to Anna Crystal for her support and efficient work as PC Secretary. She's standing down after four years in post and also to Graham Davis, who is standing down after four years as communication officer. Thank you to him for his support and for facilitating our online PC meetings and for agreeing to help with that in the future. I'd also like to thank Sheila Shields for coordinating hospitality at school events that were held until lockdown, something that she has done for over five years and it's much appreciated. This is my fourth and final annual report as my term as PC Chair has come to an end. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be so involved in the life of our school and I would like to wish the new Chair and the Committee every success. A summary of all the topics we've covered, all the campaigns we've been involved in, is included in my report. It's been very wide ranging, as have the presentations we've had in person and via our online meetings. We appreciate the time and effort of all the teachers who have joined us at our PC meetings, and in particular, my thanks to Donald, our head teacher, for all his updates. So that's it from me for just now. I'll hand over to Ros Ingle, our treasurer, for her report. Thank you very much, Elsa. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Ros Ingle. I've got two children at the school and I am the treasurer of the parent council. I'm hoping that, yes, here we are. I was hoping that my slides were going to be coming up. Um, so I'd like to give you my um, financial report for the school year of 2019-20. That is the one that finished in June. Thanks, Graham. Next slide, please. So the actual accounts of the um, previous school year uh, for the Parent Council are uploaded onto the Parent Council website. Normally in an in-person AGM, we would be handing out copies of these accounts to you all, but um, you can find them on our website under Minutes and Files. And that consists of the Treasurer's Report, the Transaction Sheet, Balance Sheet and the um, Income and Expenditure record and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dougie Sterling who examined the accounts for us and also as this is my first time uh, doing the accounts gave me some invaluable advice on drawing them up. Next slide please. So first of all just to briefly run through the income um, this is a list of our main income sources with the previous year's figures and the current year's figures for comparison. The social events this year and the um, various refreshment stores that we ran, as you can see, um, earned a lot less money this year than previously. And that is because um, we had to stop doing them halfway through the year, basically. So the social events that we did manage to have before the lockdown started was an S1 parent social evening back in September 2019, and also the Music Fest about a year ago in October. And then a quiz night that was organised by our new fundraising group. And we also run refreshment stalls, both at parent consultations, you'll have seen us selling teas and coffees and uh, wine and crisp stalls at some of the other concerts and evening events such as diversity and spring fling. But obviously this year, neither of those happened, which explains the rather large dro drop in income from those sources. A couple of years ago, we started off a parent pay appeal, which makes it a much easier for a quick donation on one button via parent pay and as you can see that's brought us in a reasonable amount of money slightly less again this year. Um, easy fundraising which I'll say a wee bit more about later um, the donations from that actually went up this year which is promising and every year we get a grant from the City of Edinburgh Council and that stayed static and that's based on the number of pupils at the school. Next slide. This is just an illustration of the proportion of all those different fundraising sources and as you can see at the moment the parent pay appeal is the predominant source of income but in a normal year we would expect the social events and the refreshment stalls to have a bigger proportion of our income. Next slide please. The expenditure, um, we there are various expenses incurred in running the social events and the um, consult, parent consultation refreshment stalls. This time that actually included the purchase of 50 mugs, which you will have maybe seen at the parents evening refreshment stalls, which we hope will reduce costs in the future because they are to replace disposable paper and plastic cups. But the vast majority of our expenditure is on the small sums fund, which is the way in which we pass the money we raise back to the school. 
to fund their various projects. And I'm going to say a wee bit more about that in a minute. Next slide, please. Next one, Graham. Thanks. So this is uh, an example uh, uh, of the proportions of our expenditure. And you can see that the expenses incurred a really quite small proportion. And we were able to donate 93% of the funds that we raised back to the school in the form of the small sums fund. Next slide. So the, the small sums fund is the name that we give to the um, allocation process of the funds that the parent council raises throughout the year. In any given school year, we give back to the school the funds that we raised in the previous school year. So the money we gave to the school in the year in question was actually raised the year before that. It's an annual process, takes place in the autumn term, and um, we're actually currently, the applications are open for the process for this year. So an application form is distributed amongst the staff and they can apply for funding for their projects. And these include projects to support pupils um, in, with literacy, for equity issues, um, with equipment, and with, um, for example, after school clubs and sports clubs. And then once the closing dates passed and we've received all the applications, a group of parents meets and reviews all of the applications and we allocate the funds to each individual project according to the amount that we have available. And unfortunately, in the last few years, we've always been unable to fully fund all of the requests. So in the year in question, the process that happened last autumn, we regretfully had to turn down two large requests from design and technology in order to be able to fund the rest. Um, so a full list of all of the allocations that were made last year is also um, is part of my treasurer's report, which has been uploaded to the Parent Council website. Um, next slide. I wanted to. Can we have the next slide, Graham? Thanks. We want I wanted to share with you some feedback from some of the teachers and members of staff about um, the money that they received and what they were able to do with it, because I thought this is a useful illustration of how important the money we raise is to the school. So this is one of the English teachers. Um, I'll let you read it, but it's um, about she was running the first minister's reading challenge for um, S1 and S2 pupils, and she found our grant very helpful in getting the equipment and the books and also some of the rewards and challenge material for that. And the next slide. And this is some more feedback from one of the support for learning teachers who wanted funding to um, get some play therapy equipment to work with some vulnerable children who'd experienced trauma. And the second comment is from the Pupil Equity Fund team who had found that the uh, Pupil Equity Fund from the Scottish Government, the criteria are very strict and there were quite a few pup pupils they felt would benefit from support that didn't actually meet the criteria for the fund. So we were able to supplement that fund and enable them to extend their work. And again, as you can see, they were pleased to receive that funding. So you can see that the money that we raise does good work in the school. Next slide, please. A couple of new developments have arisen this year before the lockdown happened. Um, the first one was the formation, as Elsa mentioned, of a separate fundraising and social events group, um, which happened at the beginning of the last academic year. Um, this is completely separate from the parent council, but the money will come to the parent council bank account and be dispersed in conjunction with the parent council. The ultimate aim of this group is to raise money to fund larger one-off projects which will help the school but um, we're also talking about a proportion of that money coming in to supplement the small sums fund and enabling us we hope to be able to fund more of the projects. The second major development that's happened is um, opening of a dialogue with the James Gillespie's High School Trust. Now this is a separate organisation which is a charity, registered charity and they also have some funds available to disperse. So we began discussions just before the lockdown started about possibly aligning our fund allocation processes with a view to being able to fund all of the requests between us. Um, both of these things, unfortunately, were put on hold during the 
uh, lockdown period. But as Elsa mentioned, the fundraising and social events group have got big plans to start raising money, even if the events have to be virtual. So um, there's a lot of um, ambition and um, excitement around some of these events. Um, next slide, please. So finally, I just wanted to recap on what you as parents can do to help raise money for the school. Um, you could volunteer either with the fundraising and social events group or um, with directly with the parent council to help us run a refreshment stall at um, one of the school events that I've mentioned. It's good fun. I do it myself. You help, help sell teas and coffees or glasses of wine. It's a sociable activity. You get to meet people, get to know how the school works a bit better. The second thing that you can do um, is make a donation via parent pay. There's a, a parent council donation button on parent pay. Um, very quick, very easy. One, one click and you can donate some money. And we're asking people to consider donating what you would have spent on tickets or school events or refreshments this year when they're not happening. Um, and the third way you can help is through um, signing up to Easy Fundraising, which is a scheme where um, you can raise money for the school without paying a thing by um, the retailers that you purchase from um, donating the money. And so all you have to do is go to the Easy Funding, Easy Fundraising website. There's more details inside my Treasurer's report and you can actually download an add-on to your browser which will alert you when the site you're about to purchase from will make a donation and you can activate that. Um, I went on that site yesterday and discovered that we have 141 active fundraisers through that scheme. So it would be great if we could make that number a wee bit higher still and get the funds in to help these um, extremely worthwhile projects that the staff are using their time to set up in the school. And that's everything that I wanted to say. So thank you very much. Is that back to me now, Graham? Great, thank you very much. Thank you, Roz. I'd like to formally constitute the Parent Council Committee and the office holders now. Normally, we'd be looking, looking around the room for volunteers and sending round a sign up sheet for people to give their details to join the PC Committee. And we've had to think how to do it this year. And we thought the best way was to seek nominations and volunteers in advance because of the lack of interactivity via Teams. So we've been emailing via the school admin and in Donald's Friday email a request for parents to email us if they're interested in joining the PC or taking on a volunteer role ahead of this evening. And thank you very much to everyone who got in touch. We recognise that it's not ideal, far better to be able to look around the room for volunteers for various posts. So apologies in advance if this process doesn't seem as interactive as it normally is. But we've had to work out a compromise to appeal for volunteers in advance given current restrictions. Um, just a reminder, please do email us before 7.45 this uh, 7.45 p.m. this evening if you're keen to help out and if you haven't got in touch yet. That will give us a chance to put up a final list of PC committee members before we end our meeting this evening. We are still keen to get more helpers. So can I start now by inviting nominations for the post of chair? Can I ask if you're nominating, could you do so by writing the name of the nominee via the Q&A panel um, so that we know who it is that you're nominating? And I will then read them out loud. I'm going to wait patiently for. So this is for the post of chair. Just going to check with Kath if anybody has used the Q&A panel yet. Might be there that our our idea for, for this to work is having a bit of a glitch because I do notice that there are no questions coming in on the panel. Yeah, so one's just appeared just now. There is a nomination from. Oh, there's uh, a nomination. That's great. I'm not seeing that yet. Uh, I, can, I can read it out. It says, uh, I would like to nominate Sarah Scott as chair. Um, and that came from Sheila, she, Sheila Shields. 
Thank you. So that's Sarah, Sarah Scott's nominated as chair. Um, can I ask for uh, somebody to second that, please? Again, if you could nominate by writing it in the Q&A panel. I think perhaps I've got a slight problem with my Q&A panel, so I'm going to look to Graham to... Oh, no, it's coming up now. That's great. Mine probably was just on the wrong, the wrong page. So if I can look for a, a seconder for Sarah Scott. I'll be very patient about this because this is replacing me. So well, there's no need to rush at this bit. Well, in the interim, I think I can probably jump in and nominate if we haven't got a, a seconder. So I'm going to second um, Sarah Scott as chair. Um, I'm going to take it that Sarah is watching. <laughs> I'm getting a thumbs up for that, a second. That's good. I'll take the, the thumbs up as a, as a seconding. Um, I know that Sarah is watching. Sarah, I'm going to take your silence as acceptance <laughs> and um, I hope that's that's OK for you. So thank you very much for, for that nomination and for accepting. Can we move now for nominations for the position of secretary? If you could do the same, if you could write your nominee in the Q&A panel. Charles, I see Charles has seconded for Sarah, that's great. I think that's a new, a new one coming in. Well, while we're waiting, I might just step in again, just in case there's any issues. Um, I know that Laura Young has, um, has, has, a, has agreed to be nominated, so I'll just take the opportunity to nominate Laura Young. Um, perhaps you could write that in for me, Graham, in the Q&A panel. And can I look for a seconder for Laura Young? Yeah, so we've got um, actually just had Anna Crystal pop up with the with a nominee for Laura as well. Oh, so great. That's, so we've got a, a proposed round a second. That's lovely. Thank you for that. So that's a nomination for Laura Young. Ah, and Sarah has accepted. So thank you, Sarah. In practice, this, in practice, this process f felt like it would work a little bit slicker than it, than it is. So we we apologise to everybody and everybody who's uh, bearing with us. We've not got long to go. Um, Roz, our treasurer, has kindly agreed to stay in post. So um, can I formally have a nomination for the post of treasurer? I'm happy to nominate that one and I'll put it through the questions as well. That's excellent and I'm happy to second and thank you Roz for agreeing to stay in post. I have to say I'm not sure if it's any more awkward online than it is in the room. I, I, I seem to remember the, the phrase I once was told was that when nominations and volunteers are looked for everybody ad adopts the shampoo position which is basically looking down and making sure that nobody catches their eye. So um, I think basically we have something similar going on but in an online version but you know we've, we've got there so I do, I do appreciate that. Um, that's us filling the posts. Now, just a reminder that you, you, we are still very keen for people to join. So do, so do please email if you're interested in joining and if you, you could do so by 7.45 p.m. Also, please let us know if you have a particular area you might be able to help with. We're keen to have someone help with communications, but if there's another role you're interested in doing or helping with, please just email. So thank you in advance for that. It is a very strange way to do things. I do wish we could meet in person and nominate in a more normal way, but thank you to everyone for getting in touch and to those of you who volunteer to take on new roles in advance. Much, much appreciated. So you're probably all very relieved to know that that's the procedural side of our AGM. I'll hand over to Donald now. Thank you, Donald. Thanks, Ailsa. Um, Kath wanted to say a few words before I do my presentation. So Kath, do you want to come in at that point? Hi there, just to jump in briefly, I would like to express thanks on behalf of parents to our outgoing office bearers. I do have a recollection of saying to Ailsa when she took over from me as chair in 2016 that things should be fairly stable now. 
we were through the rebuild and the decant, we were up and running with the new school, the various snags had been overcome and the curriculum and exam changes were bedding in quite well. So everything would be fine and PC meetings shouldn't have to cover too much more than enjoying some interesting presentations from curriculum leads and maybe plan for a raffle or two. Things have not quite turned out that way. In her term as chair, Ilza has had to deal with many challenges, far too many to list, but just to name a few, working with parents in the school around the impact of our ever-growing role, shrinking school budgets, campaigning for Wi-Fi access, questions in the light of the Black Lives Matter movement, and most of all, the impact of COVID that none of us could possibly have imagined this time last year. With the schools going into lockdown in March, along with the rest of the world, Ailsa had to face challenges that no PC chair had ever had to deal with before. We were in completely new territory. Throughout the strange weeks that were the summer term of 2020, she dealt with each new aspect of the unfolding situation and kept communication going with parents. We could not have live PC meetings anymore, so she introduced online meetings such as this one, which have proved very successful. Throughout all our meetings, whether we've been sitting in the library or online, Ailsa has remained assured and balanced and has always managed to include everyone to enable good debates and ensure a range of voices were heard on every issue that has come up. Although she has a very busy day job and family life, she has also attended numerous council meetings on our behalf, updated our website regularly and engaged with parents to keep us informed on every important issue so that we've been able to have our say. She has been an outstanding chair and I'm sure we have all appreciated her calm, balanced and friendly approach to representing us on all these important issues. Another key committee member over these past few years has been Graham, our communications officer, who set up the meeting that we are all dialed into right now. Graham has managed our mailing list and is behind the many emails sent out by the PC over the years, which I know is a time consuming and often thankless task. He's worked hard to improve communications and engage with as many parents as possible. A particular achievement was that he made the case, along with Charles Wardlow, to the council for allowing the school to pilot the use of pupil Wi-Fi. This has been a very long journey with many hurdles and involved them in presenting to council meetings on how Wi-Fi could be used safely to benefit our pupils. I'm sure your sons and daughters are particularly appreciative of these efforts. During the COVID situation, Graham has been absolutely fantastic as our tech guru and has set us up so that we are able to run these meetings online. Many other parent councils have been unable to do the same as they have no one with Graham's technical capabilities, so we are especially grateful for that. Finally, our outgoing secretary, Anna, has done an outstanding and often unnoticed job sitting quietly in her booth in the library over the years, taking the minutes and making sense of the often lively debates we have had, as well as helping with answering emails and updating the website and deciphering the sometimes rather dodgy handwriting to add people to the mailing list. She has always produced the minutes very promptly and accurately, and this has been so important in keeping people informed when they weren't able to attend the meetings, so her work has been very much appreciated. It has been an absolute pleasure to serve on the committee with all three of these wonderful people, and I'm sure you will wish to join me in expressing our heartfelt thanks. This is the point where in a real life meeting, we would present flowers to each of them, but as that's sadly not possible, I would just ask each of them to look out for a little token of appreciation in the school bag or through their door in the near future. And don't worry, we won't attempt to send flowers in a school bag. I cannot invite you all to give a round of applause, but there should be a comment or two posted in the questions to thank them for their work. So if you would like to join me, please like those comments and that can be our virtual applause. Many thanks and I'll now hand back to Donald. Thank you, Kenneth, for your very um, full, comprehensive and fulsome praise of the those who have served and represented the Parent Council um, over the past year. Um, I'd like to particularly just uh, endorse what you said about Ailsa, who's been in the position of chair for, for four years. Um, 
earlier when I was reflecting on that, I thought it must be nearer two. I can't believe where four years have gone. And um, gosh, time does really fly past as you get older. I can I can vouch for that. <clears throat> but um, thank you, thank you, one and all. Um, I'm Donald McDonald, head teacher at James Gillespie's High School. Um, some of you uh, may not have the opportunity to meet us yet, and we are in these in these COVID times. I'm joined by Ben Lewis this evening. Ben is uh, acting deputy teacher standing in for Ian Porter, who was persuaded to go to Craig Royston to help her. The well, head teacher is on maternity leave. Um, ben, formerly head of maths here, is well known to the parents for his efficiency and great communication skills. So delighted he's with me tonight. And he's going to um, focus on S1 experience and some of the feedback that we're getting and plans for um, getting more feedback so we can improve on, on the experience that's available for, for all who are there. <clears throat> um, some years ago, I read a piece, a piece of research which talked about what are the most impact on outcomes for children. Um, I looked at uh, class sizes, quality of learning and teaching, ICT to mention but some, but by far and away, the one that dominated was as parents being engaged with their child's learning, engaged with the school. I'm really keen to mention that to encourage all of you to stay with us and to see more of you joining in the parent council meetings, be they in person or online, and really just to underline the importance of the role of the parent council. And that includes, as has been mentioned earlier, campaigning, but also closer to school, um, teas and coffees on parent consultation, consultation evenings. You know, caffeine really does make the evening go more smoothly. And I know that's hugely appreciated by staff who can sit there with perhaps 30 or 40 consecutive meetings. It makes an enormous difference. And of course, the fundraising as well is hugely important, as has been mentioned in these threatened times. <coughs> um, recapping just briefly on this term, not surprisingly, um, I'm going to say that um, um, our lives, the school has been dominated by restrictions and operational arrangements related to COVID. Um, they are uppermost in my mind, but at the same time, I hope that when your children talk to you um, at night about their math lesson or, or their PE or whatever it might be, I hope that school is as near a normal experience for them as possible. That really is our intention whilst operating in quite abnormal um, context. Pupils have been fantastic, done really, really well. They're doing what we asked them to do in terms of one-way systems, um, wearing of face coverings and so on and so forth. And we were the first school in the country, if not the UK, to adopt face coverings in response. It was pupils themselves who really were the driver behind that. Um, we had three positive cases in 10 weeks, two pupils and one member of staff. I think that's testament to the efforts that we are all making to ensure that we reduce opportunity for virus transmission. Um, I think the, the steps that we've taken um, are, are effective. The, the evidence would, would bear that out. Um, looking further on more recently, uh, SQA arrangements, we've waited um, to hear quite what they were going to be. We now know that there are no planned exams for National Fives, those who are in S4, but there will be exams in for S5s and S6s. And that allows us to put more of the detail into our planning around such things as parents' nights, reporting, and so on and so forth. And there will be uh, a note coming out to parents in the next uh, week or 10 days about what the arrangements are for this year. Um, I apologise for the time it's taken to get this out. Normally we have these out by the end of June. But this year, waiting for the SQ arrangements, we felt rather put something out and then to change it. It makes sense just to get the, the final the final details and then construct around that. <clears throat> um, ben will say more about the S1s later, but I'm delighted with how they've settled in. They're doing really well, um, but more of that later. And then I want to pick on a, a, pick on a number of points in, in no particular order of priority. Um, parents fed back to us and were asking about what we were doing about homework. And as I mentioned in the email I sent home yesterday, you may have had a chance to read it. Uh, we were planning on moving to an online system this, this year, show my homework, but COVID related lockdown thwarted our plans and we did not go to launch. So as an interim measure, we issued all pupils in S1, 2 and 3. Um, today with a, a, 
a temporary diary, a little purple jotter in which they will note their homework dates and deadlines. The details of the tasks are presented or included in teams which all teachers are asked to complete. So rather than have the youngsters completing enormous detail about all of that, the, that that's put in, uh, onto teams which pupils can access. Of course, throughout this term, um, Gillespie's life has not been the same for us. The extracurricular is very extensive at Gillespie, sport, music, study support, the excursions, Christmas concerts, senior drama, foreign excursions of which there are many. <clears throat> We're not running these at present, but we do look forward to, to better news in 2021. So we remain optimistic that we can resume these activities, which makes such a difference the daily lives of our, of our young people and really enrich uh, what school is all about. Throughout all of this, uh, priorities have to be people's health and well-being and also learning and teaching and ensuring that we deliver the core business, the education for, for our young people. In the coming months, uh, post-October, uh, we'll continue to ensure that whatever we can to maintain a healthy and fit staff and pupil body. A way of example, we did offer um, vaccinations to all of our staff earlier this week. Um, interestingly, um, the number of staff taking that um, opportunity doubled this year from, from 65 or so to 130 to 140. We're pleased about that and I hope that will ensure that we have a, a much healthier staff that's going to be key for us as we move into the, into the winter months when the normal seasonal uh, flus, cold, the symptoms can be quite similar to COVID, but I hope that the measures that we've taken there will help. We will also have challenges around cold weather and ventilation <coughs> and information, further information will come out of that and how we're going to manage it. But just to reassure everyone that um, we will try to avoid having freezing classrooms, that would not be conducive to learning. We will have to find the balance between rooms being ventilated and the rooms being warm enough for, for pupils to study in. Um, we are very fortunate in terms of the building that we have and that we're able to control both to, to good effect. Uh, so please be reassured on that, on that note. <coughs> in terms of staffing overall, we're well staffed as a school, as a large school, we're always many people moving on, people coming in, but we remain attractive to people from across the UK. Um, and I'm, I'm pleased to say that we are fully staffed, but we're always keeping an eye out and ensuring and responding um, to opportunities as they arise. Adverse weather arrangements people have been asking me about too, and again to reassure you that we do have arrangements in place uh, for people during break and lunch time so they can come inside and eat and in in dry and some warmth. Invariably, plans go awry. Um, I do put TANA announcements out to declare you know, when people should be outside and of course minutes after I do that um, the Mercurial Scottish weather ensures that a downfall and of course the TANA announcement is redundant but we will be sensitive and will be supportive of youngsters on their needs but that is proving quite tricky for us to balance that against ensuring that uh, youngsters are out in fresh air <clears throat> and not getting uh, opportunity to transmit viruses. I think importantly, we mustn't become complacent. Um, I'm really pleased with how we have addressed and managed and have had relatively few, hopefully not tempting fate, COVID positive cases. We mustn't become complacent. So I'll continually remind all our young people um, and our parents to continue to support us and our staff in all the things that we do. Uh, and I'll do that through my Friday updates and other uh, as the need arises. <coughs> We have contingency planning in place should the need be for pupils to go off school in small numbers or larger numbers that will be a return to some kind of online learning and as Ailsa mentioned earlier um, we are busy looking at what our uh, contingencies will be for accommodation pressures for 2021 where the planned refurbishment of Darach as an overflow annex will not be ready so we need to find creative solutions for that. <coughs> As I mentioned earlier, then parents evenings and reports will get information out to you in the next week or 10 days and also information about prelims. And let me just um, share with you just some of my thinking about prelims at the moment. Whilst S4s do not have final exams, I feel quite strongly that it's important that our S4s have experience of sitting exams. If we didn't do that, their first experience may well be in higher in a year and a half's time. 
Um, so we are thinking carefully about, about those aspects. We're also thinking about how we can manage some examination leave for pupils whilst minimising the time to be out of school given they've missed, they've missed such so much during lockdown. <clears throat> but we also need additional accommodation to sit the exams whilst pupils are taking the exams. So all of that now, the planning is in full flow um, and we're very much um, aware of the, the pressures and ensuring that we get through the relevant materials, whilst also giving pupils as much of a valid experience as possible for what will face them come May in terms of final exams and the, the various final assessments that we will make. <clears throat> a couple of questions uh, that came in prior to tonight I'd like to pick up on. One is in regard to immunisations. Um, the immunisations are set by uh, NHS Lothian and we become a venue for them. It is obviously very convenient and useful to have the vaccinations taking place in school. Um, I do have dates for, for these, the Teenage Booster, for example, and HPV, and they're scheduled to take place in March next year, which is a little bit away. Um, and I will add um, details of the specific dates so people can pick these up um, to the meeting notes and also in my Friday update. Um, it should be noted that the school has no influence on the dates. They are chosen by a very busy and no doubt stressed NHS. Um, and um, yeah, as information uh, comes in from the NHS, we'll ensure that we share it. We share it with you. Um, we, yeah, all the information we have will share, and I've managed to get information um, today in anticipation of this meeting. There was also a specific question being raised about the disinfecting disinfecting of desks. We have found that the most efficient way of doing this is for the teachers to spray the desks whilst the pupils are either entering or leaving and then asking the pupils to grab a piece of tissue and wipe the desk surfaces down, and also the tops of chairs, the tissues are then put in the, in the buckets. That minimises the time that pupils are in corridors and maximises the time for learning and teaching. Um, I would urge if there are any pupils out there who have got, um, I've indicated there are many rashes or allergies arising as a result of our practices, could you please let the people support leader know and we'll make sure that we have measures in place to ensure that that child is, is supported so they're not coming into contact with a spray. The timing of the spraying of the desks, whether it's on pupils leaving or pupils um, entering the classroom, is dependent sometimes on whether the teacher is remaining in the room or whether the teacher is moving off to another room or indeed whether it's going into break or lunchtime. But please be assured that that's continually under review so that we keep people safe, but also maximise um, learning and teaching ac across the entire school. Um, they were the questions that um, Ailsa had mentioned earlier, as I would make reference to in my, in my presentation. I will, of course, be responding to questions later this evening coming through the Q&A. Um, so thank you for listening to me, and I look forward to responding to that later. And at this point, I'd like to hand over to Ben Lewis, who's going to share with us a bit more about the S1. Can you, I'm just checking, can anyone hear me? Can you put your thumbs up if you can hear me, please? Perfect. Okay, apologies, just a bit of a problem with the mic there. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ben Lewis. I'm an acting deputy head here at James Gillespie's High School in the year ahead for S1. And it's my pleasure to give you uh, an update on the S1 so far. Uh, now, now, please remember, uh, particularly if you're new to the, the school as a parent, that if you have any questions about your child, you can email the school admin account and they'll direct it to the best person to answer your query. Uh, next slide, next slide, please. So over the past few weeks, um, I've had the pleasure of speaking to several groups of S1 pupils at breaks and lunch times, and I've focused on asking them three questions. Uh, the first question is just what has gone well? Uh, and you can see some of the, the, the feedback that's come through from several of the groups. Um, lots of them uh, smiling as soon as I asked them, saying the transition was much better than expected and it was much less nerve wracking once they were here. Um, there was so much positive feedback for our befrienders. Uh, befrienders are S6 pupils who, who help the S1s um, find their way around and take them from room to room in their first few weeks just to, to support them and answer all the questions that they have. Um, lots of feedback about they like how the school day is arranged, um, enjoying the, the different experience to having lots of different subjects. 
Um, and there was also lots of positive feedback for the virtual transition that my colleagues um, Ian Porter and his team put together. Uh, and also lots of lovely feedback for the teachers saying that they've been really helpful. And I think the, the second to last bullet point there is obviously a lovely one always to hear, making uh, new friends. So that was, um, those were like that from all the groups, there were very, very common themes there. If we could move to the next slide, please. The second question I asked was, what has been tricky? And um, the common responses were they were finding uh, finding a way around the building. What a lot of them were saying is, is that they're feeling better about that now, but the, um, even with the Befender's help that they found that aspect of our you know, large campus, because it is a large campus as we're a large school, and um, they found that tricky. And an additional complexity to that was the one way system that we've had to implement due to COVID. Um, they said that that, you know, that I, I think put an additional pressure on them to try and make sure that they were they were getting around. However, what they said when giving me that feedback is that the teachers were always really supportive so that if a pupil had gotten a little bit lost and um, the teacher wasn't then uh, you know, giving them a lot of grief about that, that the teacher understood and was providing support and making sure that they could find a way in the future. Um, pupils recognised that they wanted to mix beyond their class bubbles, but they couldn't due to COVID, um, but they definitely expressed that that was something that they would really love to do as soon as as soon as the um, guidance allows it. And there's also feedback um, that just from a, a much smaller number of people's actually uh, saying that there was lots of homework that they've been finding tricky balancing that. Um, so the next question and the final question I asked was, uh, what could we do differently next year for the new S1 transitioning to high school? And what was interesting about that question is hard, they, most groups couldn't say anything. They were, and that was obviously lovely to hear. They felt that, that it, it was such a good transition for them that there was nothing they could change. And actually, I only got one piece of feedback, uh, which was to give less homework. And I said, so, you, so you're saying that to this, I said to these people, so you're saying that you want less homework um, for next year's S1? Uh, that, that would be your advice. They go, oh no, I thought you were talking about us. No, if it's next year's S1, please give them more homework. So I've, I've taken that feedback as basically giving less and more homework. Um, However, I've, I've really enjoyed uh, you know, going around and speaking to the pupils, but I want to have a more robust process. So in this um, PowerPoint that will be made available to you, um, there are two links, but what will also happen is I, um, I'll share them with Donald and he'll put them in his Friday update. And we're going to have a, a pupil survey link so they can they can answer these questions, uh, every pupil who'd like to take part. And there'll also be one for you guys, the, the parents and carers as well, to give us feedback. And that will be open until the 30th of October. Um, and then I'll, I'll look forward to feeding back to the parent council and the wider parent body about that feedback and what actions we're going to take on the back of it. Uh, next slide, please. So um, I made the slide um, before the email went out on Tuesday for you. So just I, I know Donald has already spoken to you about that and you've had an email on Tuesday, but just a quick reminder because it's always good, uh, I think, as a teacher to, to repeat things to make sure the instructions come through that um, right now what your child has been given uh, if they were in Kiato today is a is a is a temporary jotter. Um, whilst we uh, roll out our digital diary, which will 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 happen definitely after Christmas at some point, but we will keep you informed. But in the meantime, all the homework will remain on Teams. But what your child can do is now just make a note in this diary of, of the date that is due. They do not need to, to make a detailed note, as Donald said earlier. Next slide, please. But one of the things I'd like to uh, make, make, you know, just make sure very clear that the pupil support structure in our school, and if you're again a parent who's who's just joining us for the first time in S1, um, I want to make make it clear that you're, you and your child know what support is available. So each child has a key adult teacher. Now that's someone they meet once a week uh, in their key adult class that happens every Wednesday, um, and they can have discussions every Wednesday with them. But in addition to that, uh, that key adult teacher will set up an individual meeting at stages throughout the year. Uh, to go through some key questions with them and see if there's any additional support that we can provide. Your child also has a pupil support leader. Um, the, the child knows that they can email them to make an appointment if they wish to see them. And uh, for reference, just if that that is the, the pupil support leader is usually the, the person who teaches the child PSE. Uh, and we also have a year head, which is a deputy head teacher. And in the case of S1, or if you're in S6, that is me until mid-May uh, when my colleague Ian Porter will return to us. We also, um, as we become an increasingly digital school, 
um, we're making sure to provide as much support as possible for pupils as they transition to, to Teams and other aspects of, of our digital platform. So pupils have been learning in computing how to access the applications on Office 365, for example, the Outlook um, email system or Teams, but also learning how to use Word and PowerPoints if they're submitting you know, homework tasks on those types of documents. Uh, pupils can raise issues with their key adult teacher um, and then the key adult teacher can re redirect them um, to the most suitable person for additional support if that's if they're struggling with any aspect of, of the IT. Next slide please. <clears throat> so pupil representation, um, it's, it's so important that pupils feel that uh, in addition to the support that I was talking about on the previous slide that they know that their voice can be heard and they know how to make their voice heard. So in addition to the various surveys that they, they get to take part in, um, what happens is we have a pupil council in our school and a pupil is selected from each register class to join the pupil council and that process has been happening over the last few weeks. So your child in the register class, um, what they can do is if they have an issue that they want the pupil council to raise, then they can go to the representative in the class and ask them to raise that at one of the pupil council meetings. The pupil council meetings will be starting after the October break um, and are they tend to happen every couple of weeks. And what happens at those pupil council meetings is that they speak to representatives from what's called the pupil voice. Now the pupil voice is made up of 10 S6 students. And what those, those students do is they listen to those concerns and they sometimes can resolve them themselves. So that's part of their leadership as pupil voice. But if they feel they need to bring them to um, a member of the senior leadership team, then the pupil voice meet every week with a member and I have the privilege of being that person who they can then discuss those issues and then I can take them forward and see what I can do to help resolve them. Uh, next slide, please. I just want to go over some of the um, COVID related changes um, that have, have, have been sort of ongoing and as I'm sure you're aware, uh, these can change and as soon as they do, uh, what we do as a school is we make sure that we inform you um, via email. So first, um, indoor PE and the use of swimming pools currently being reviewed by the council uh, and Ailsa made uh, reference to um, information she heard that the next um, review for that is tomorrow, the 15th of October and fingers crossed that, that we're going to be allowed to move forward. But what we do as soon as we have the clear guidance and what their decision is, um, we will let you know. Um, and extracurricular clubs uh, are, we'll hopefully hear more about them as well. But again, as soon as we know more, we'll let you know. Uh, also, I'll let you just see there's notes there about instrumental lessons. Um, so most ins instructors are back in schools. Uh, I'll just quickly read through some of those bullet points there. Current focus is for SQA students with the BGE, that's S pupils in S1 to uh, S3. We'll be returning to lessons as capacity allows. Instructors are liaising uh, and class teachers to identify students who have had a P7 lesson uh, that will uh, and hopefully be able to transfer that to S1 and currently there's no brass woundman or voice um, that is due to I'm sure you can imagine COVID and making sure that there's not um, part, air particles moving around um, and recordings are using to track progress there uh, and auditions for new S1 pupils will take place as soon as possible if uh, predictions might be that that won't be till January at the earliest and I would like to thank the instrumental team and the, mu the wider music team about the, all the you know making adapting to all the changes that are happening. Now, uh, what I've um, also done is I've asked for um, uh, departments if they'd like to have any updates or any information they'd like to give you. And I've collated that on slides 8 to 12 of my presentation. But what I won't do is I won't read through those just now. Uh, I'll let you read those at your own leisure. Um, and if there are any questions again that arise from those slides, uh, you can again email the school and we will always direct it to the most uh, useful person to help you. Now, I'd like to um, at this moment just thank uh, the Parent Council, you as parents the, and carers, the pupils and the staff for being so welcoming and supportive in helping me step into this role. Um, and it's been such a pleasure to get to know so many of the S1 so far. And I really hope that they're going to have a lovely break. I'm looking forward to returning after the October break. And also will continue to enjoy the year as much as I have been. And at that, I'd like to bring my presentation to an end and I look forward to answering any questions tonight or if um, not, I can we'll make sure to, to answer them in the Q&A section that always goes live on the website. Thank you very much.
So I'd like to hand back to Donald now. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Ben, for your full and comprehensive um, report. Um, what I'd like to do at this stage then is pick up on some of the, the queries and questions that are being raised through the Q&A section. I can't help but notice an awful lot of thumbs up for the praising the outgoing um, office bearers and those who have represented the, the Pym Council. So well done and richly deserved. Um, <clears throat> just take them in the order they, they appear. Um, a question about when will the young people be allowed inside at break and lunch due to the cold? As despite warm clothes, including ski jackets, they're still very cold. Um, current uh, guidelines are that people should be outside um, at break and lunchtime. That's come from Scottish Government. Um, it is a tricky one for us because we don't want any of our young people being being uncomfortable. So there's a bit of a judgment call to be made there. So as we work our way through the through the, the winter weeks as lie ahead, we're going to have to obviously be be sensitive around that. We also recognise that um, different people have different thresholds for when they, when they feel cold. <clears throat> um, so that's going to be work in progress. And if we do get it wrong, please let us know um, and we'll aim to get it right. But there is there is a balance to be struck about um, ventilation and, um, and being inside, outside. And as I say, we haven't got the perfect answer to that and we'll, we'll keep it under review. Um, question on diaries for S1 to S3. Not all pupils know how to use these diaries effectively. Are there plans to provide pupils with some advice on how to get the most out of their diaries? <clears throat> um, my suggestion would be on these that they are constructed as a diary um, and divvy them up week by week. So we've got the months and the years. Um, had time permitted, we would have given them planners, etc. So we'll make it up um, as a diary. It's going to take a bit of time to do that, but construct it with the relevant days in each week and each month. Uh, and my advice also is to enter the date in the diary or the detail in the diary. For example, if maths homework is due on the 1st of November, you put it in on the due date is the best way to, I found, to organise that. Um, and it maybe will follow up and give a bit more detail to pupils um, as well around that. So it's entering the due date when it's due. Um, that allows you as a parent to have a look as well and check to see that some of the youngsters who maybe are less well organised give themselves plenty of time to complete exercises. To re-emphasise the, 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 the detail of what's to be done is actually in teams, which pupils can access, but parents can't. Apologies for that. It would be better if parents could access it. Um, but in reference to that, there is another app uh, called Show My Homework, um, which we will launch. We'll get ready. It's been mentioned earlier by, by Ben. Um, and we'll have that so parents can actually also see and access what home, the detail of what's being assessed. And we will get that being, um, being issued and we will get that sometime early, I hope, in 2021. So question about um, disappointed that my son did not in S5 did not have a P lesson again this week due to bad weather and surely they could still get out maybe go for a walk or jog around the meadows. We, we will do that but if it's absolutely pouring down torrential rain we won't because the youngsters get soaked and there's no way then that they could actually change because we don't we don't allow access to changing rooms as per government advice and that is frustrating for us um, but I hope that you understand that um, better that they're warm and dry rather than sitting for a, an extra few periods being being soaked for the rest of being, being soaked for the rest of the day. Um, a query in relation to pupils accessing their support leader, pupil support leader. Um, currently it's email only. Um, and I know this has been a discussion that is ongoing with pupil support leaders. I should point out that they, can, they have caseloads of up to 300 pupils. Um, and email certainly is an efficient way of doing it, uh, avoids youngsters queuing up, etc., during break and lunchtime, which given that all our people support leaders, all five of them, um, essentially share the same large office, we would see difficulties around that. But if I can bring Ben in at this point, and Ben, anything you want to add in relation to how we might better offer access to people support leaders where that might be an issue in terms of email? Yeah, no, th uh Thank you, Donald. Uh, no, I, I agree with you that one of the challenges that we faced was um, 
pupils queuing. Uh, the corridors in Brunsfield House, if you've not seen it, are very small. So we, we, we at this stage feel that the email system is the best way to make sure that there's not any COVID transmissions, um, which you know, for people standing in line waiting to get to see the people support teacher. That being said, if any parent has a particular concern about that system, then I would email uh, my uh, the school in the first instance. And what we can do is, we, if it's working for the, the vast majority of pupils, but there are a few small cases where the parent and the child feels that that doesn't work, then we might be able to say, let's put something kind of bespoke in place for those individual children instead of necessarily changing the whole system. So what I do is, if you've got, uh, if you're a parent and you've got any feedback about that process, could you send it to the school, and we'll consider it as part of our ongoing review um, around that. Thank you. Um, thanks, Ben. Um, picking up some of the other queries that are arising, just bear with me while I scroll through. Um, <clears throat> um, the query about um, disruptive behaviour. Um, and for parents who, who are new, we have a, a four stage approach to any behaviour that is disruptive in a classroom. Stage one is just a, a quiet word. Uh, by the teacher for the youngster to, to change what it is that they're doing. Stage two would be relocating them in the classroom. Stage three, if that wasn't working, we would relocate in another classroom. And if that wasn't working, we have a duty head system where a youngster would be removed and it would be escalated. Um, in terms of relocation in class or to another classroom in terms of keeping in bubbles, when we do that, um, it is the aim that the youngsters would be at least two metres from any other youngster. So in the event of someone testing positive, they would not be a contact under the criteria as currently provided by the NHS. OK, so to reassure you that we would not be increasing the, the number of possible contacts by doing that. But we did feel as a staff it was important to ensure that learning and teaching is maintained um, and can go on as normally as possible. Um, I'm just moving through S1 parent consultations and um, we will be issuing dates for these for all the parent consultations in the next few days. So please look out for that. Um, there's a question around why the teachers in S1 change often. Um, I'm not sure if I fully understand that that question. We have got a pretty settled staff. Um, pupils in S1, they do have around 16 subjects. It's how we how we deliver our curriculum and in some in some cases they may have uh, more than one teacher it may be a split class but perhaps if i have an answer to that question someone could come back to me um a question about um, prelims for s4 <coughs> and seeking guidance as to how pupils will be assessed for national five <coughs> we will let parents know as soon as we hear from the sqa we are expecting to get more details around that in the next few weeks. At the moment, all that we have is that there are no planned examinations for National 5, but we don't as yet have the details of what assessment evidence they will seek. Um, but as soon as we do, we will ensure that's shared with, with everyone. Um, question, is it possible to give parents a Teams account so we can oversee more than one child from one app? Um, Probably not is the answer to that. Um, to give parents a Teams account so we can oversee more than one child from one app. I'm not sure if I fully understand what that would mean, but if it was around uh, the council providing a, a Teams account for for each parent, I don't think that would be realistic. But I'm not I'm not sure if I fully understand the question. So forgive me if I haven't if I misunderstood it. Perhaps someone else can come back on that. Um, question about the vaccinations. In March, include the one the current S2 has missed to to COVID in S1. I presume so. I believe that the, the sessions will cover those, but again, we'll cover the detail of that when we communicate, and we'll get a very clear communication. I have no doubt from the NHS in terms of what they want us to put out um, around that. I, I'd emphasise that we we provide a venue for the vaccinations. We provide a means of communicating with parents. All the comms that we get. Um, they, they come via NHS, so we'll, we'll share these. <clears throat> um, a question around is JGHS appointing a counsellor for students? The answer to that is yes. <clears throat> you may be aware that um, 
In fact, I'm going to ask Ben. I know Ben has been working on this and they, they likely have the up-to-date information as this is, this is something you've been working on, Ben. So can I bring you in at that point? Yes, thank you, Donald. Uh, yes, yeah, so we, we, we will be appointing a councillor. Um, we're basically in the final uh, stages of that happening. The recruitment process happened at uh, council level um, and I've already been in consultation with the person who's been selected for our school. They're going to be uh, working with us Monday to Thursday, uh, a, a point eight um, support in place. And uh, I've been working with that person and have quite a few discussions with them about setting, getting systems up and running, but we're just waiting for the final uh, sort of processes to happen at council level for the appointment to become live. So as soon as um, that goes live, we'll make sure that that information kind of goes out in a Friday update and welcoming um, that our new colleague to the school. Uh, lovely person. I'm really looking forward to having them working with, uh, with, with ourselves and our students. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Um, would add to that that quite a number of our staff are trained councillors um, and we do offer that on a day-to-day -day basis as has always been the case. We also acknowledge that through lockdown, post-lockdown, more of our young people are presenting with, with challenges and issues that do need a much more specialised um, councillor approach. So we're looking forward to the councillor joining us so we can um, support all the youngsters as best we can. Um, we're going to, I'm just going to have a quick look through to see what I may or may not have missed, but to reassure you that we'll follow up after the, the meeting with uh, more detailed responses to all of these. Um, I'm just drawing through, bear with me a second. Um, there is a question that's appeared. Our staff at James Gillespie's High School taking part in routine national COVID staff testing sample. Um, currently, the means by which staff um, uh, access a test is if they are um, displaying symptoms or, um, as with other members of the, the, the population, um, they've come into contact and they're concerned because they're in a, in a, in a, in a key area, a key worker. Uh, teachers do have priority access to getting tested, um, so we're able to, to escalate things. But generally, it's my experience in, in Scotland so far that most of the tests that um, staff find themselves being part of, they tend to be completed with results coming back within three or four days. Um, we, we haven't lost too many staff. It's been a little bit erratic in terms of losing staff whilst they're waiting for a test result. More often than not, it's because their child, their child has been sent home from primary school or another school, and that's accounted for most of the staff absences that we've experienced. Well, I would say that staff absences um, are much lower um, this October than they have been in, in previous years. Part of that, I think, is the precautions people are taking with disinfectant and face coverings, etc. But also we're doing fewer excursions, so there's less, less time that staff are out of school. So fingers crossed that that um, higher staff um, attendance, if you like, continues and we're able to maintain a, as normal a learning and teaching curriculum as possible. Um, unless Ailsa or anybody else in the team alerts me, I think I've covered all the areas. Um, so at this point, I'll, I'll hand back to, to Ailsa. Thank you, Donald. Yes, I think you've covered all the areas. Thank you very much for that. So thank you to Donald and Ben for joining us this evening. And thank you to Kath for her kind words. This might have been the first time that I was actually grateful we weren't gathered in person for our PC meeting, not because I wouldn't have liked the flowers, but because I was probably blushing at your kind words and I could hide that online. I'm sure Graham and Anna would also like me to thank you. We've had quite a few people email us this evening to join the PC committee, thanks to them and to everyone who got in touch before this evening. The final list of members is on the Q&A panel. And of course, many thanks to our new post holders for volunteering. Our next meeting will be online on Tuesday, the 17th of November. Thank you for joining us this evening. In the meantime, keep well. Bye for now. <laughs>